like a record like this, and it's like every 90s rap song, video, <laughs> Fish Islands, oh, never mind. <clears throat> Saying how great the halftime show was, but rap music without the swearing just doesn't really jive with me. You kind of need it in that's the punch. Right? Here in Eminem trying to <laughs> anyone see the video of Snoop Dogg warming up? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about. Marijuana will be part of our discussion today. Oh, no, it definitely will be. So this is just a short review from last time. If you're wondering. Maybe a couple minutes. Marshall. Try to get the, uh, the reflection papers in if you haven't already. So, by this evening, get them in a little bit late. That's totally fine. Um, so, what are we going to do today? Uh, something is going on with the, the password here. It must have been changed. But I think that's the reason why the link isn't working. So, I need to track down what is happening. Um, so, I am going to record it as recording at the moment. Um, just in case anyone wasn't here. Maybe a few people not here. Or was that? So, what are we doing? Uh, a little review from last time. And start to get into uh, the, really the ergogenic aid that most people think about steroids. Uh, towards the end, however, um, we've got some current event stuff. And I don't know if you noticed on Blackboard, I put a folder basically just current events. And there's a bunch of stuff there. Uh, we'll kind of dive into it at least a little bit, maybe talk about it, possibly next week, we'll talk more about it. Uh, as I was going through it today, the the figure skater from from Russia, the guy had put up a couple couple articles, and then all of a sudden it was like, bam! New York Times gave sent me another another alert saying that there was three substances in her system, not just one. One of them was banned; two of them were were not. But um, so, yeah. it's like it's like perfect timing for for a class like this. Just need to, I need to teach it every every two years when the Olympics is on. <laughs> we, can, we can talk about it. Because somebody's going to get caught, probably. So. All right. So last time, uh, I guess we started off looking at the, the Shea Act and then um, marketing claims. Can't say cure, promote, or anything. Uh, research In terms of the research studies, dietitian coach, trainer, they must re rely on that information from the peer reviewed studies. And some of the information I've put under the current events was actual peer-reviewed studies. There was a couple articles, I think, was it CNBC or, I, I can't remember what, which one, New York Times, generally reliable. Sometimes there's a little bit of a sway one, one way or the other, depending upon what source you get. Uh, but normally for the science stuff like that, there does tend to be a pretty hard, um, hard line that's generally facts. There's some opinions in that, but. Having the peer-reviewed studies from it helped to back that up, and I'll, I'll show you why I kind of did that. Um, so anyway, uh, they need to be uh, reliant on these on these studies, or else it's just kind of up in the air. Opinions. Um, if their their athletes are on anything, they try to wean them off the best they can. There might even be a process for that as well. Uh, then you may get into some ethical issues if there's a trainer or a coach that knows that their athlete or client is on steroids, something that's actual, actually illegal in certain parts. 
Do you turn them in? Or do you try to just get them off, wean them off yourself? There's a whole dilemma. <clears throat> Uh, safety issues, uh, a little bit of energy intake. Uh, the uh, supplements generally are, uh, well, they'll try to boost your heart rate and blood pressure. We've seen that with ephedra. Sometimes they're used as meal substitutions, but maybe not the best meal substitutions. Meals tend to be the best. Meals, actually, uh, kind of a wide variety of food. Uh, toxicities, there could be some uh, either mega doses or even maybe just a small amount of a substance could cause some uh, toxic effects. Even caffeine has a mega dose, it's a lot. Water even has toxic effect. Take too much of it. So just be careful. Uh, the quality control labels generally sometimes they're not quite accurate. They may have things in them that aren't on the label. They may not have things that are on the label. Uh, so, and whether or not just that's just because where it's manufactured, the manufacturing process itself, the company could just be just trying to sell powder or whatever sugar to people and that's about it and they don't actually 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 put the substance in there talk a little about proteins the makeup of them what they're all about uh, it might be the quality of the protein that people are getting where there's some benefit uh, these branch chain amino acids those tend to be the ones that uh, maybe see the, the most bene benefit uh, within any type of maybe muscle masking possibly uh, Substituting actual protein uh, in the diet with any powders or bars might be beneficial for some people, but might not necessarily be necessary for most individuals. Again, somebody who's eating 20, 30,000 calories in their diet, powerlifters or even uh, Olympic athletes sometimes, maybe need to supplement with some of this just because they, they're taking in a lot of calories and they need to make sure they're getting enough protein. So they might supplement it, not because necessarily it's protein, but because it's calories. They, they need the calories total from that. Uh, and the last portion here, talk about nitric oxide, alpha, uh, arginine, alpha ketoglutarate, um, kind of like the precursor to releasing this in vasodilating muscles, or vasodilating the blood vessels, having that muscle pump throughout the day. So extending it the whole 24 hours or close to the 24 hours throughout the day, instead of just immediately right after the workout, which then benefits possibly the absorption of any of the nutrients that you're bringing in. Does it work? Some of the research on it, well, most of the research says no. There might be some evidence that there was maybe some muscle mass gain after a certain period of time. That could have been placebo related. Uh, or placebo effect. Really, not necessarily related to the placebo itself. But. And then we went into creatine, natural process throughout, throughout the body. You eat meat, you're going to consume some creatine. Naturally occurring. So, vegetarians, uh, vegans are likely to have, possibly likely to have, a um, a lower amount of creatine than somebody who's eating a lot of meat. So they might benefit from a supplementation. So there is some evidence to show there's an increase in power output in certain exercises that are performed. Uh, max strength, greater force production. Strength gains just in general. Uh, fat free mass, which is the muscle mass we're talking about, that tends to be increased a little bit. And then uh, weight gain within the muscle, not just the actual muscle mass itself, but there's also a little bit of water weight that somebody might gain with creatine as well, which 
and kind of bloats the muscles, bloats the body, and then the meatheads in the gym are looking in the mirror and they're like, oh, yeah, right, sweet. And they feel better about themselves because they look bigger in the mirror. Oh, yeah. And they take a picture of themselves and do all the little Photoshop things, and contrast and clarity, and all kinds of adjustments. And there you go, you look better. Which is also the one of the other links I put up on social media. And I swore performance, possible improvements. One of those ones that uh, is, there's a good chance it will work at least a little bit on some people, but the effects of it, the side effects of it are very minimal, if any, depending upon who the, who the person is. And again, they've, they've given creatine, they've given lots of creatine to uh, kidney, um, renal patients, people with cancer, uh, diabetes, diabetics with heart conditions have no uh, lasting effects uh, in terms of the side effects, negative effects. Also, a couple of recommendations, and I'll, I'll give these out there just in case you uh, I'm thinking it. Uh, I know early on, and I don't know if they still do this, the, the companies would put out a, uh, a guideline of, when you're starting it, you have a loading phase to build up the creatine in your system, and then after like two weeks of that loading phase, then you can get dropped down a little bit throughout the day. So it might, might have been like two scoops, first two weeks, a couple times a day, and then after that, it was like one scoop. Well, that was just a marketing play. So just take, just take whatever, whatever it is. Uh, not necessary. Uh, the marketing play was, well, they'll use more, so they got to get back sooner to get bought. Um, just regular creatine monohydrate. I think there's other forms of creatine, but the creatine monohydrate tends to be the one that is one, one used mostly, most often in studies, and tends to uh, show the most results, positive results. Um, I don't think there's anything else here. No need to go super expensive. Just even the cheap stuff at Walmart, I think, is okay. You get it? It's from what I know, anyway. But I could be wrong. Yeah. I'm saying Walmart, but I don't want to order stuff on Amazon. So, maybe it doesn't. Like Walmart's the storefront for Amazon. Anyway, uh, then started to kind of transition away into steroids. Well, so, the natural derivatives of, of testosterone, uh, there are some kind of steroid precursors that are used. Dehydroandrostein dang, yeah, also known as andro, which is much, much better to say. Uh, it's not as anabolic, if any. So only a small portion of this that's naturally occurring in the body actually gets converted to testosterone. And if it's a supplement the body's making anyway, probably not going to get any extra con being converted into testosterone. So the actual steroidal effects would not be. Uh, present. But some of the same side effects could actually occur from it. So, and this is what's happening with the doping testing. You have a certain amount of testosterone versus the inactive form, which is known as epitestosterone. Um, usually it's about one to one ratio, but anything over four to one, where you have a bunch of testosterone, but only a small amount of epitestosterone, that's when the trigger starts. Uh, some people have naturally high amounts of testosterone, so it might be two to one or possibly three to one. Once the individual gets to four to one, that's usually where the trigger happens, where they'll, they'll flag somebody. They might do an additional test, or if it's like eight to one, more than likely they can shoot up. So, uh, or kicking it orally. Uh, that's the other recommendation. I don't, I'm not saying you should, I'm just saying safety wise. Um, everything that I've seen, injecting it is actually safer than taking the pill form of steroids because then it bypasses the liver to get broken down. 
So it just goes directly to the bloodstream. It's usually why people are injecting it. So nuanced take on that, Vern. Huh? There's a nuanced take to that. What's the nuance? So I should you say that in class. So if, for education it. purposes, <laughs> yeah. if you're if you're just starting out, you'd want to take Anavar. Uh, and you can take that without suppressing your natural testosterone production for six to eight weeks. You can see how it will affect you. And then if you so decide, you can then start injecting that cell. Yes. Hypothetically. For education. Yeah, hy hy hypothetically. Yes. And to take something to try to uh, just wean yourself onto it might be beneficial as well. I've never taken it. A couple people who have. And all right. So let's get into steroids. South Park is still on me. I remember when the first South Park episode aired. First season of 1997. All in 97. <laughs> so uh, this one was called Up the Down Steroid. Uh, this this episode, uh, Jimmy is in the Special Olympics and he ends up finding uh, somebody to give him steroids and ends up taking them and winning. He has a guilty conscience then and eventually gets on stage with a couple famous individuals that we may talk about. Mark Blair, Barry Bonds, and actually Jason Jombe, he just passed away. Um, not exactly sure what the cause of death was. So it was? Mm -hmm. Really? I didn't even hear that. I wonder if there was a little bit of de depression, possibly in terms of some of um, possibly things that happened in the past. So, yeah, it's... I don't, I don't want to necessarily equate it because it, it's really tough. And we talked about this last time. It's tough to equate things that are happening, either suicide or heart disease, to steroid use. You could make a correlation, especially if there's a lot of people having like the same problems. But it's still tough to make a direct causation. So it's just a correlation. So it might not actually be a be a cause, but yeah, unfortunately. Um, right, at, right at the beginning when Major League Baseball it started to come out, um, there there were a couple other players that really early on started to talk about it at least a little bit. What was going on back in the '80s and '90s in Major League Baseball? Um, there's one, man. Cannot remember his name. He died like as soon as it, it was like right after a lot of this stuff broke. I'll think of it. But, um, but these three guys, they were accused of potentially taking steroids. Uh, McGuire had admitted it. Bonds, I don't think, has really admitted it, but we pretty much know that that it happened. Um, his head grew uh, astronomically throughout his career. Uh, now, here's the here's the thing. Um, all three of these people had natural talent. Uh, Bonds, when he was with, with the Pirates, he was phenomenal. Uh, you know, he couldn't throw out somebody at home plate. Uh, make that joke because one of my most terrible memories is seeing. This is going way back. You guys probably have no idea what I'm talking about. The last time the Pirates were so close to the World Series, Sid Bream was limping around third base. This guy for the Atlanta Braves, and Bonds couldn't couldn't make the throw. So and then they lost them. Yeah. Never mind. Anyway, McGuire and and Bonds both had natural talent, but McGuire was actually a pitcher before he well, uh, in the in the majors, and um, he kind of liked hitting and. He was really good at it too. He was able to hit home runs, long home runs, even before he said he was taking steroids. Bonds was the same way. 
uh, Bond was kind of the whole package. Uh, Giambi was also a good hitter. I mean, all these, when I mean, they made it to the major leagues, they come up without actually taking anything. But it could be some peer pressure. Could be the fact that well, there's millions of dollars on the line. They might have seen some people around them getting more money, more notoriety, starting more games. Just not these individuals, but there's a player that's sitting on the bench and he's seeing other players getting more time playing, getting better contracts, and they know what they're doing. It's kind of an open secret in the locker room anyway. Some of the owners probably knew about it. Major League Baseball itself, in terms of the administration, probably knew at least a little bit about it. They may have didn't want to hear any details, but it was there and some people kind of knew about it. The general public, I don't think really knew. I, I think maybe there was some suspicion because you started to see, you, you kind of went from players who were just, they looked like regular people, right? They were, they were, you know, Five foot ten, maybe six foot tall, maybe a little taller than that. They weren't huge, muscular dudes. Look like they should be, you know, a linebacker. They started to look a little bigger, and they were hitting a lot of home runs, and it was exciting. There was a strike, and this is actually kind of a, a, a current thing too. There was a strike in Major League Baseball back in the early '90s. It basically canceled the season. I, I think they had the All-Star game. It was like shortly after the All-Star game, season basically ended. Uh, and it pretty much killed baseball in terms of people being excited about it. Nobody wanted anything to do with it. A few years later, uh, Cal Ripken Jr. broke Lou Gehrig's uh, record of playing the most consecutive games. It brought a few people back, but it was the home runs, the excitement of the long ball that actually brought them back. So it was probably, even though an open secret, they didn't want to talk about it because they were starting to make more money. It's getting more popular. We don't want to do this. This is going to be bad for business. Even though know, it was eventually going to come out. They probably, they probably knew that at some point. It wasn't going to last forever. So, as long as I ever had a South Park picture up. So, so now, instead of just having the people juice, they're like, we're going to juice the balls. Yeah, now the balls yeah. go farther, they've made the bats. I mean, it's like, oh, okay. So, well, and they've even gone the, the opposite direction before. When Coors Field opened up in, in Colorado, I don't know, for the first few years, uh, because the ball generally travels about 7% further. Uh, because of the high, high, ugh, the high altitude, they wanted to try to do something about it. So they actually started putting the balls in a humidor, a cigar, uh, basically a big cigar humidor before the game. Put all the baseballs in there so they would have a little bit of moisture in them so they wouldn't fly as far. So that cut down on some of the home runs, which is kind of, kind of weird. It's like, well, the engineers should have, and people around the team should have known that the ball is going to fly a little further, so just build the stadium to where the fence is just back a little bit further. It's only like 25 feet or something. Anyway. So, but they want more people in the stand, so. So they have gone the other way before. Uh, the year McGuire, <laughs> McGuire and Sosa uh, and Ken Griffey Jr. was actually kind of in that race for a little bit anyway. He kind of died off middle of the season. But when they were getting close to the record, getting close to that 60 home run mark, Major League Baseball, every time McGuire or Sosa caught the bat, they would bring out new baseballs to the umpire. And these baseballs actually had a it had an invisible stamp on them where they could put it under a blue light and they could actually detect it make sure it was the right baseball because if they hit it in the stands now you got maybe some people that have a have another ball that maybe they grabbed during batting practice say oh no this was the ball that that was hit 
that McGuire hit a 70th home run with or whatever it is, whatever number it was. They could either make money off that, even though it wasn't the right ball, or Major League Baseball might want that ball back to put it into the Hall of Fame. So they had to put these stamps on it just to make sure that that person that got the ball, it was the actual ball that was hit. So there was a lot of pitchers who said that those balls felt a lot different. Now that could be a placebo effect. They know that there's different balls coming in, but they felt like they were wound a little bit tighter, that the seams on them weren't as raised. So <laughs> then all you gotta do is just take your fingernail and just dig them into the seams right on the side, or take a bottle cap and dig them around the seams. I had a, had a teammate do that for every game, <laughs> uh, which is would be considered an every kind of game, whether that's legal or not. I mean, it's doctoring the ball, so it's probably not legal. Uh, all right. So we'll obviously see more uh, with these these couple guys, uh, at least on the on the left here. Uh, John B., I, I don't know if there was really much admission there. I don't know. Uh, but. Oh, what was that? So, every time there's a discussion with steroids and sports, it doesn't matter what sport it is, it's really in the news now because we just had the Hall of Fame voting for Major League Baseball. Uh, Russians again. <laughs> Um, it wasn't necessarily steroids, but we had the Olympics, so it's always kind of looming over the Olympics that it's all the stuff that's happened in the past or and could happen in the future. Then you get a bunch of people, at least in my area of the country, Western Pennsylvania. Oh man, these people should never, never be in the Hall of Fame. They cheated. The reason that they should have taken that stuff and they should just go away. Those same people loved the 70 Steelers. <laughs> the steel curtain of the 1970s. Even Terry Bradshaw admitted the quarterback of the Steelers back in the 70s and 80s, that early 80s. Won four Super Bowls. They admitted to taking steroids. That's right. What was the policy? Oh, there, there, well, there wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there was any back then. Oh, so that's yeah. Right. So, and, and even major league uh, players, I, I don't know if any major league players had taken it back in the 70s. There, there probably was. Uh, I know back in the 60s and 70s, some of them, they'd take speed just to keep them awake because they would be out all night on a bender. And then they need to stay awake for a game in the afternoon. Um, other drugs were prevalent as well, just not like marijuana, probably cocaine. But any any type of uppers they wanted. Anything to keep them going. The reason that they gave that they were, they were taking the steroids was to help them with recovery, which steroids would help you with recovery. You're breaking down the muscle tissue, breaking down all kinds of tissues in your playing a sport like this. Might not necessarily grow back any teeth, but it would help the muscles recover and help the tissues to repair themselves. So, was it right? I don't know. That's that's kind of up for the up for debate. I mean, it was legal, at least at least at that point. Um, and there were probably other teams doing it. it. Probably just wasn't the Steelers. There were probably the Cowboys who won a couple Super Bowls back then too. Um, so there were other teams that were probably doing it. It wasn't like it, they were the only team. So, which brings in a question: Was it a level playing field then? If everyone was basically doing it, it's kind of like the late '80s, '90s baseball era. I wouldn't say everybody was doing it, but there were probably a lot of people doing it. So. What constitutes a level playing field? And when most of the people in the sport are using it, are doing that one particular thing, if every, let's say 90% of the pitchers, or let's say even 100% of the pitchers, are, have a little bit of pine tar inside their glove that they rub off and put on the ball, 
or every single one of them sands the ball before the game or does something? Is it, is it still a level playing field? Might be because everyone's doing it. Now it's unfair for the batter, I guess. Unless he has a court bat, then it might even even out. <laughs> Who knows? So theaters of the of the seventies. Again, that, that was uh, they admitted it. A lot of them. Some of them, a couple of them have died off, but I think a, a lot of that may have something to do with CTE. So uh, brain injuries over and over and over again. Uh, probably the most famous case would be. Well, there's probably two famous cases there um, was with the CTE. The one that actually was in the um, the movie Concussion, uh, Mike Webster. He was the center for them back in the 70s. Uh, he pretty much went insane. So. And a lot of people tried to attribute that to steroid use when he died, because he, he died a fairly young guy. Uh, he's in his 50s, I think. Um, but that probably wasn't the reason he died. He, his brain was deteriorated pretty much, so probably had nothing to do with the steroids. That's why you can't necessarily make a causation when you know somebody who was maybe taking it. There was probably some other factors there, especially in a sport like this where there's a lot of other things that are going on. Any questions? All right. Oh. So let's go back to a slide that I think I did the first first day. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, the, the recreational drugs, alcohol, cocaine, marijuana, nicotine, they were all, uh, I got messed up there with besides the parents, all considered ergolytic, so they're not necessarily considered ergogenic because they aren't work generating or they're not helping you to work in a general sense. In that they tend to be things that maybe affect your ability to perform certain tasks. Alcohol being probably one of the most common ones you think of. Think of. Decision making skills tend to deteriorate. Uh, in the case of nicotine, it actually increases blood pressure. Marijuana might cause people down, it might calm them down too much. But some of these could be considered ergogenic. People use them as, as ergogenic aids. Alcohol, but well, all of them can be can be used to you know to feed some sort of addiction. So in that case, it's helping them. Uh, maybe not in terms of a health benefit standpoint, but it's something like alcohol. If somebody is an introvert and they're going out with people, they have no idea who they are. Right? Maybe they have a couple friends, but they don't know the vast majority of the people there. They might have a few drinks, or as soon as they get there, they start having a few drinks. That way they can relax a little bit and open up and be somewhat conversational, not just kind of sit in the corner. Like I normally do at a party, I'm just kind of. So, I have a few drinks. Somebody who is uh, nervous about public speaking, sometimes will take alcohol. So that helps them per to to perform again. Maybe not in an athletic sense. Game, a lot of, a lot of major league players might use that as well. Uh, and then we got marijuana, which is. Tied to one of the current events. So generally not seen as, a, as an archogenic aid, although it is banned by the IOC, the National Olympic Committee, but not banned in a lot of states now. So. And for good reason. The legalization of marijuana is one of those things where the, the power of numbers kind of overtook everything. 
<laughs> oh no, we're just gonna do it. Oh no, it's illegal. Federal government, we're we're the, we're the feds. We're gonna we're gonna come after you. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. All right. So taking steroids does it work? Yes, we 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 know that from uh, numerous anecdotal evidence. But what's the actual data on it? So this is a figure from uh, textbook. So we got a couple different things that are going on here. So let's let's break this down. We got on this side we have no exercise. And this side we have exercise. So these were individuals who exercised as well as or not did not exercise versus people who did exercise. Also, within each of these two groups, we had people who were taking a placebo and individuals who were taking a little bit of testosterone. And we have uh, different exercises. Uh, we have um, SWAT, bench. I'm not even sure what the uh, quadriceps area, so that would be the actual muscle mass area. Uh, triceps and then fat free mass. Keep an eye on this down here, these two, and its overall strength. Even the people who did not exercise that were taking testosterone versus the people who were taking the placebo who thought that they could have potentially been taking steroids, they still didn't gain anywhere nearly as much. As someone who's taking testosterone and still didn't exercise. So yes, maximizing the benefits, somebody needs to be working out and performing some of the activities necessary to build muscle and to increase performance, whatever that performance may be. But they don't necessarily need to. That's, that's the benefit of steroids is that somebody doesn't need to work out as hard. If you look at the individuals who exercise with the placebo, Maybe a little bit more here in the squat versus the person that didn't exercise but took the steroids. That's how powerful it is. Once it completely replaces exercise, because there's still a lot of neuromuscular stuff that needs to happen there for performance increases, but just overall strength they increase it. And then obviously taking, taking it plus exercise is a win-win. I don't, know if I, can, I don't know if I consider it a win-win, but that's, I guess I need to be careful. So, so do they take train people? How did Homeboy get less triceps? You just stop training? Where, well, we, on oh, triceps, oh, yeah, yeah. they change? Yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what happened there. And the same thing with the, with the quads. I'm just wondering if they lost a little bit of muscle mass. Because, I mean, they, I mean, they weren't exercising. So they may have lost a little bit of something. So, or maybe they thought they were taking testosterone and, oh, I'm going to eat better now. And they could have actually shed a little bit of fat too. So I, I don't know. Of course, their, their fat mass, or their, their fat free mass actually went up. So, but yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, one, that one was a little bit strange. I remember when I was first seen this, I'm like, I don't know how they dropped. Of course, it wasn't. I don't, I don't think that was a significant amount, but might have been. There you go. It works. This is why it's illegal. Well, it's one of the reasons why it's illegal. It puts people on an unlevel, unlevel playing field. Somebody could be busting their ass in the gym and whatever training they're doing, but somebody who's taking testosterone or whatever other type of steroid still might be training, but maybe not training nearly as hard. Even if both of them have equal natural talent, whether or not that actually exists or not. I, I don't know. So, so do you know who was one of the main proponents of making steroids illegal? No. He's in the office right now. Joe Biden. What? Back in the day, he had the committee that oh. made, that scheduled anabolic steroids. And he was like, our kids in high school are getting too damn day. <laughs> and then you cut it off. But yeah, that's it. that was his whole point. It was like, these kids. There, there were a lot of, well, there were a lot of politicians that were, um, yeah, had their, had their hands in it. And, yeah. and obviously this is, it's something where if, 
if teenagers are starting to think, I'm not talking about like 18, 19 year olds, I'm talking like 13, 14, 15 year olds. Sure. And then it can maybe, well, it, it would be an issue because there are long lasting effects that could happen, especially if they get basically addicted to it. Um, and they're still growing at that point. So they haven't matured physically or psychologically at that point. So they don't know maybe when to stop and how much to, to take and when is, okay, I'm going I'm to hold off on this. Other than possibly running out of money, I guess. That's, that's the other thing. Because, I mean, it might be a little bit tough to go to you know, your parents every time you keep running out of allowance, you know, two or three hundred dollar allowance money every, every month. <laughs> hey, yeah. oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm going to out a trend. That's... <laughs> so, so anyway, it, um, it works. Uh, yeah, there's multiple other reasons why it's illegal. That, that's one of them. Is what's it doing to the younger, younger crowd that could be getting their hands on it? All right. So anabolic steroids themselves. So they enhance tissue growth. And I always talk about where. I never found the mark. Oh, I was taking that. <laughs> but there were some here. Yeah, oh well. Anyway, so anabolic from metabolism, metabolism that's the overall energy system of the body breaking down and building up tissues. Anabolic is the building up of tissues. And the catabolic is the breaking down of the tissues in this case. The adrenergic or male sex hormones, uh, that's that's what we're using is the testosterone. That's what um, is mostly released in males versus the estrogen. So it builds muscle mass, it builds the tissues up. So it increases body mass, the fat-free mass. So muscle mass itself increases and then also fat mass decreases, losing actual fat tissue. Subcutaneous fat tissue, that's the important part, because it could actually increase some of the fat that's flowing through our bloodstream. Right? That could be a problem. The bad fat, the bad cholesterol. Strength gains are going to likely occur. Uh, there's a shorter, there we go, shorter recovery time because there's an increase in the synthesis of protein, building up of those tissues that were broken down during physical activity. So that's where um, a lot of people were taking it for back in the 70s is because they could recover much better from the workouts. Uh, McGuire even said that that was one of the reasons why he was taking it. And he was actually fairly injury prone over his career. He, he missed a lot of games because of injuries. And I, I think that's probably where he's seen that benefit. So he probably initially took it for that. We also seen the benefit of uh, probably influenced by Conseco. Who is that Conseco? Right. Increase in red blood cells and blood volume. This would help to increase overall capacity to breathe and to use oxygen throughout exercise. So we normally think of the anabolic steroids as just simply building muscle mass, brute strength, and power output. But for somebody who's doing maybe a longer distance event, it could still be potentially beneficial. As long as the muscle mass gain isn't significant, then you might slow, slow them down there. But, uh, there is random testing throughout uh, all of the... Um, Pretty much every governing body in, in athletics, NCAA, the IOC, Major League Baseball, all the, all the major league events um, that are professional sports have random testing or sometimes mandatory testing. Uh, I think everybody who tests, who wins a medal at the Olympics, I think all of them have to get tested, I believe. So even though, even though they may have been tested before, they still have to do it again. But there are ways of beating the system. I don't know if I should, uh, I think I should this to you guys for, and there's a dose for, uh, response relationship. And that's where the problem started 
become a problem. <laughs> is that oh, take 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 a little bit, we'll gain a lot of muscle mass. Take a lot. Oh man, we can gain even more muscle mass. Right? So we're gonna we're we're, we're gonna do more. And the problem with taking more of it, or well, what is the problem? We're bringing in testosterone from outside of the body. It's naturally occurring. The gonadal glands, testes. We're bringing, in and out, bringing it in from the outside. Our body's like, we don't need to do this anymore. So the testes shrink. And that is one of the side effects of it. Then if it, if the individual is not doesn't go off of it soon enough or there isn't some sort of cycling, then there's some issues where the body can't make it anymore. Then they have to almost at some point go on testosterone therapy to make up for the fact that their body is not making enough or can't make it at all anymore. So that can be a problem. Uh, then you get these really weird mood swings, too, because then uh, both males and females both have estrogen and testosterone release. Males just have more testosterone than estrogen. Then you start dropping your testosterone. Your estrogen is up here. So then you've got these really, really weird mood swings. Now, the topic of roid rage always comes up. Probably somebody who is an, an angry person off of steroids is probably an angry, per, angry person on steroids. Somebody who's a nice person on steroids or off steroids is probably a nice person on steroids. There could be a little bit of gray area there, but I don't know if it's necessarily um, a thing. <laughs> but you may have some instances where you get. Yeah. Five foot ten, six foot tall, two hundred and fifty pound, eight percent body fat guys watching Titanic crying, um, you know, type of thing going on, which isn't bad. It's, it's Titanic's not there, but anyway, even though like this would have been realistic, that door was like twice. With this, like he could have survived. No, no, no. Anyway. So, beating the system, there are many ways, and athletes uh, know this. You've gotten tested, you basically gotta drop everything. Someone has to watch you. You can't just go into a stall and just be into a cup or uh, whatever device it might be. Uh, there were ways of getting around it. The toilet paper, like rod, you put the put through the, the toilet paper uh, cone or you know piece of uh, cardboard that would be filled with a clean vial of urine. And so you just dump that in. Sometimes it would be hidden within the stall somewhere. Uh, sometimes you just they would just have it in their pocket because well no one's going to go into a stall with you. Sometimes there would be um, uh, a a, it was referred to as an oil change. It was uh, it was actually pointed out in a movie back in the early '90s called The Program. Uh, he was performing an oil change, basically taking out the bad urine and actually putting in good urine, meaning that there was a catheter they were pumping in good urine. That way, in the morning when he had to go do the testing, it was all clean urine that was coming out. Whether or not that actually worked or not, I don't know. Sounds kind of painful. But then we have the Wizenator. Uh, and this product is still up there. It's still on the web. They have a website called the Wizenator. Uh, I think it's 70, 80 bucks. Fill it up. They have different skin tones for it. And products like these are the main reason why everybody has to drop every, excuse me, drop everything. Because the urine, the clean urine, is stored in this jock strap, and this is fake. So that's that's that's, that's not a real penis. So there you go. This is the main reason why 
I do. So always one step ahead. All right, so what are some of the risks? Uh, we talk about it working, well, then what's the problem? And I talked one of them about trunken testes. But if that's the only side effect, then you just, as long as you have a little bit more testosterone, make up for it. So what? Well, you got some other problems. You get some stunning growth. The epiphyseal plates, the growth plates, tend to fuse if they are not already fused. So they're increasing the growth rate of the individual. So you get the low sperm count and then the atrophy of the testicles. Mention that. Prostate enlargement, cholesterol increase, and we also have hypertension or otherwise known as high blood pressure. So the increase in cholesterol and the high blood pressure, those are two very important aspects of overall health, long-term long health. Increasing cholesterol levels as well as having high blood pressure consistently could lead to heart disease. And that's where you could have some correlation and possible cause and effect with maybe some of the older folk who uh, were taking steroids back in the 60s, 70s, even 80s, maybe having heart conditions now. Even uh, some of the bodybuilders uh, back in the 70s, 80s, actually Schwarzenegger had open heart surgery, I guess, years ago. Uh, but a lot of them have either had heart attacks or they've had bypass surgeries. Again, it's not necessarily cause and effect because we don't 100% know that it was because of the story. Plus, they're, they're getting in their 70s and 80s now. When you get 70, 80 years old, you're probably going to have some problems unless you live an absolutely clean life. But a lot of these guys were eating a lot of red meat, too. So there's a lot of fat and saturated fat in there, which could have led to that also. So it just wasn't. Steroids, and they were taking a lot of other drugs as well. Sometimes they they were taking stuff that they had no idea what it was really for. It might have been pseudoscience and could have been hurtful. So. Uh, speaking of marijuana, Schwarzenegger was also known to smoke weed like quite a bit. Smoke weed, cigars, we drank a lot. <laughs> All that list of ergolytic stuff, but yeah. Okay. I don't think you can. Uh, other risks, <clears throat> heart disease, and a lot of that was because of the cholesterol in increase, high blood pressure associated with it. Another one, kind of more superficial, but acne either on the face or sometimes a lot on the back, sometimes on the back knee. Uh, any liver diseases, tumors, whether it causes cancer or tumor growth, tumor growth, but it could propel the tumor growth. If there's, if there's already a small tumor there, it could increase the size of it. Mood swings, aggression, again, that word roid rage, that's it's more anecdotal. It's uh, not any real scientific evidence behind it. Again, people who are pissed off on uh, in normal life without steroids are probably going to be pissed off when they're on steroids, so it probably don't matter. I don't think so. We'll move on. <laughs> Scared you, didn't I? Uh, I don't know what boobs are you using. <laughs> if you would drive with me in a car, you'd be like, man, that's road rage. Like, no, that's road rage. Yeah, it's like, well, if you just go, you know, I wouldn't have to yell. Let's ah. Risk of using male pattern baldness. Yeah, there you go. Hairiness. It seems a little odd, but male pattern baldness, but then here he does. Deep in voice, decreased breast size, menstrual irregularities, clitoris enlargement. These all, as you can see, are on the female side. So they are essentially turning a female into a male. 
they're boosting the testosterone, which is throwing the testosterone and estrogen out of whack, <coughs> causing them to possibly lose some hair, uh, grow facial hair, uh, grow even chest hair and hair elsewhere, a deepened voice. In fact, if you listen to any videos of uh, female bodybuilders who have been known to take steroids, they, I mean, their voice is fairly deep. <clears throat> Decreased breast size. Some of that is because they're losing fat mass. So that's part of it. Uh, menstrual irregularities. Uh, some of them may not have a period anymore. Uh, clitoris enlargement. And then on the guy side, we have the gynecomastia, which is the growth of breast tissue. And then sexual dysfunction amongst both the males and females, either a heightened sense of um, Maybe a sexual desire or possibly suppression of it, uh, just not able to perform. So on the female side, there's been lots of before and after pictures, and you can look through the internet and find a whole bunch of them. Um, there's one uh, that I found, I'm trying to think of her first name, but I think her last name is like Gutowski. Um, but you see the, the, the facial hair growth. Uh, there's a little bit of Possibly a little bit of male pattern baldness up here. Um, so, <clears throat> but a lot of them you can see that they were, um, I mean, they were super fit. And I'm not saying, I'm not judging anyone how they look, it's just this is the before and after. I mean, people can do whatever they want to do, it's totally fine with me. The beauty is in the eyes of the whole. Uh, yeah. Any questions? Sorry, I've been talking for forever. <laughs> right, this is a uh, a video we're we're not gonna uh, watch. We might watch this possibly later in the class, but I want to go over some other things first. But um, one of the first scandals, I wouldn't say this wasn't definitely the first one, but the East German swim team. Back in the 70s and the 80s, um, female swim team was actually uh, one of the first Olympic sports where steroids became heavily, heavily involved. And uh, some of the repercussions, the health repercussions of some of the women, um, they've interviewed them and they're still having some problems. So possibly some of the growth. Um, I mean, these were young people too. They were in their teenage years, 14, 15 years old. I think even younger than that, they were giving them these steroids. Oh, excuse me. So, but some other things I want to go over. So we'll take a break. Then we'll come back in about five minutes. This is always different when I come in with questions. Is there anything available for you guys? Let me double check. Yep. 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 Oh. 
You guys can stop me anytime you have a question. So, Vern, you want to have a nuanced uh, discussion? Sure. Do you think that all anabolic steroids should be illegal or just the ones that are real dangerous? Or do you think it's just black and white that are going to be illegal? Or... I, from, from any type of substance, this is my personal opinion. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I don't know the effects like this. Okay. So I pretty much all of it should be legal unless it is causing somebody to be completely off the planet. So like like I've I've heard people on PCP, like they're not even human anymore. Sure. Like so I don't know if that should be legal. Um same thing with some of the steroids. I I don't know. I, mean, I don't know enough about aim, some of them. Aim, I, well, yeah, because I don't know enough about it. Yeah. <laughs> my 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 instinct is we should have enough information to be able to educate the public. And people are gonna make their own decisions probably anyway. Sure. So I'm all for decriminalization and there being no criminal penalties for the use in small. Yeah, you could argue that that is nonsense, but I think that there should be, you should be able to just walk into the store and get just regular testosterone because then you know it's like safe, whatever. Like you're getting into like some crazy like mint and like these, you know, reduced things and they're like super potent like do you know the indice for uh analog steroids how testosterone is the one to 100 to yeah. 100 yeah. and then everything so like anabar is like 60 40 you know it doesn't have a lot of androgenic effects but it's not as anabolic so it's safer that's why women take it whatever but like you have something like mid which is so far down and it's a 19 nor and it's like 2500 to 3500 and like even just a little bit it's for like going like you know a week into uh something or like ufc fighters will take it fight me because like it has such a, a low yeah. amount of time they won't be able to really detect it so like stuff like that's crazy like i don't think the public should be able to like get that uh well yeah i mean there's there's like, always yes. been labs or somebody trying to sell something that's a little bit more powerful and that's probably what like there needs to be 
I, I think there needs to be some. There's gonna, there's gonna be something there. I can't just be like ah, everybody do whatever they want. <laughs> right. Like ever, like anything, and, and then you start getting some weird, weird areas. Right. But um, I've always been. I don't think there should be criminal charges for anything. Because I oh, yeah. regards to somebody who wants to do something to themselves. Uh, but like also, there should be access to these things. <laughs> have little to know yeah i'm i'm more for education and making it a, a health issue and that's with all drugs but i mean i could have different opinions than you guys and that's totally fine too i'm okay with that that's, that's what's great about this guy mm -hmm. so you you would never support being able to go into cbs and get your testosterone symphony off the oh, show. oh 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 no i uh, i think it'd be, be fine if if cbs wants to do that that's oh that's sure that's totally okay fine. yeah uh now maybe like baseball or if you work at a company and they say you can't be on this we're going to drug test you then that's really fine the government can't come and actually arrest you you know atf I mean, I'm breaking down your door. So you're okay with private industry being more restrictive? Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'll, always. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you have a private company, I mean, a private company can basically tell you what to wear. Sure. So yeah. Uh, okay. You know. So I mean, they can they can say we, we have uniforms and this is what you you dress like. So I mean, look at the NFL. The NFL. I mean, you have to. I mean, there's certain things about their socks they have to have and. Um, their shoes and stuff like that, unless there's like some sort of like breast cancer awareness, like you can't wear like different colored shoes and stuff. So it's, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm all for people making their own decisions, education. That's really what I'm all about. However, I know some people don't have that opinion. That's fine. Well, it's on the phone. All right. Where are we at? We're here with this damn commie. Commie figure skater. All right. The the reason I found okay, so in the past couple couple weeks, a couple things have, have happened. And I remember thinking a few days ago, I'm like, man, I need to just start putting this stuff up here. That way we can have like a discussion or kind of at least get the information out there to show you and there's kind of like a scientific lesson here as well so major league baseball stops PED testing so performance enhancing drugs um so there's a link to this one so why they stop and i did not realize this because i have not really paid much attention to many sports in the past month or so besides maybe a little bit of football but baseball's in a lockout right now and uh, they may or may not have a season they may or may not start on time uh, they basically got to the point where, I mean, no one can really do anything dealing with Major League Baseball at the facilities. So they are not testing anybody at this moment in time. It's the first time in 20 years that they haven't been testing. Which means that there's a window now where some players could take it, and it doesn't really matter. So that's kind of big news. Um, that, where I first seen this is somebody had had a, uh, and, and I didn't realize it. I'd seen the report about Major League Baseball and the the Players Association and collective bargaining and all that stuff a couple weeks ago. But then last week I, I'd seen it wasn't necessarily a meme, but it was a picture of McGuire, Mark McGuire, and Sammy Sosa, and then it had a tweet about they're not testing at the moment. I'm like, oh yeah, that would actually make logical sense because they, they don't have to right they're in they're, they're a lockout so um there you go so they've stopped testing uh, whether or not individuals are going to actually take it or not whether or not they're going to test the waters um if they are a minor league player they still get tested in fact i believe some minor league players have gotten caught in, in recent weeks but if they have a, an actual major league contract, um, but they might have been maybe bumped down to the minors, then they cannot be tested. So um, weird stuff going on there. So again, whether or not this actually matters, it may be a nothing, nothing burger or whatever, whatever, whatever it could be nothing about nothing. 
you know, it is what it is, of course, depends upon uh, what you mean by the word is. So I have a hypothetical. Mm -hmm. So do you think that if somebody at any point in time, because there's obviously long lasting effects, so you're just mm -hmm. not has taken performance enhancing drugs in the form of anabolic steroids, because the other ones are more acute. Uh, do you think that disqualifies them from competing in, in something like this? Like, at what point in time is it like, oh, ethically, it's okay. You took a year off, you know, because there's often, there's... It's a good question. What do you guys think? It's one of the things I want to talk about. What do you think? Somebody gets caught, they're off a year, or maybe they get suspended for an entire year. Um, I think it's, it's Major League Baseball's, I think their second offense, I think, is the entire year. I think. I don't know. I, I, I know they changed the rules because I think at first it was 50 games, then 100 games, and the whole season was the third one, then the fourth strike. But it took like four strikes <laughs> they were, to, to they were out. But they're out for a year, they're cleaned up, and then they come back. And does that disqualify them for any accolades? Player of the Year, Hall of Fame, because they in this one particular season, they took it. What do you think? Do you have any strong opinions either of you way? Keep talking about old man. Hey, come on, we've been talking about this since Big Poppy retired. Another example of how baseball destroys baseball. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it should like stop them from getting like awards and accolades and stuff like that. I mean, they can take a year off and still go on them. Yeah, I mean, if they're, if they're kicked out for a year and they come back and, and they're clean, now if they continue to do it, would you have a different view on it then? That's kind of what Alex Rodriguez did. He, he admitted to take, well, first he said he didn't do it vehemently and then admitted to it. And then, um, because some names have come up on a list of some things, but then I think basically the rest of his career, which was only a few more years, he didn't do it. So, He's probably going to be locked out of the whole thing now, too. But he's probably had natural talent to begin with. I don't know how much he actually took. So, or he could be like Benny Ramirez, test positive for it. And you're like, well, I'm going to retire. <laughs> I'm not going to take, take the suspension. I'm just, I'm done. So, what I'm confused about is. If you're a league and you're not willing to tolerate performance enhancement, mm -hmm. why, why, why would you have a strike system? It should be a one and done. Like, oh, you cheated. See you, brother. Peace. We're a, we're a clean league here. And that's something too. And I, I don't know if that's built in because there, there, there have been times where people have tested positive for honest mistakes. Sure. And I think you could make the case that the Russian figure skater. Could be a mistake. There could be something there that is. Uh, she she had some stuff in her system, but she was also living with her grandfather. We'll, we'll get, get into that. Um, there there have been some uh, some players uh, like from the Dominican Republic. They don't speak any bit of English at all, and their translators are not around them all the time. And they end up finding some substance that, that they take a supplement or something, and uh, they think it's okay, but that has a banned substance in it. They can't. You know, read the actual label on it, so they don't do their due diligence to make sure that what they're taking is legal or not. So there, there have been some instances like, like that where someone has been caught. But the problem is, then that that puts a you know, like they kind of get blacklisted in the public eye because they've been you know put on the well, they failed the drug test, so they must be on st anabolic steroids. Well, it might not be anabolic steroids; it could be something else. Um, even some of the Agents, the um, chemical agents in Rogaine um, are used as masking agents. And those sometimes are on banned lists. 
Um, in fact, there was a there was a story of a <clears throat> NHL player, uh, a goalie, actually, who had he had a massive amount. I, um, I'm trying to think what the what the what it is in Rogaine that's actually causing it to to mass the uh, the steroids, but. He had, he had a bunch of it in his system, and they, and they caught him for it. And he said that it was for, you know, he was trying to regress the, the, the hair loss. Um, I think he was full-blooded Italian, so he, uh, he, he had no problem with a full head of hair. So, uh, anyway. Yeah. Do you think you can make the same argument for that track star over the summer when she didn't possibly know what she was taking? What, uh, was it was that the one that took marijuana or was it who, who, who oh, was that? Know, that much. No, 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 no. Who, they wonder what oh, Shania Carey. I don't remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think it was uh, she was taking marijuana, right? Was she taking anything else? It was another drug, and she blamed it on pork. Really? Blamed it on pork. So it was steroids in, in in the pork. I mean, that could possibly be it. And there's steroids and some beef. But I don't know if that translates into having high testosterone in the body. Though. So that's I know the, the one, and this is the, the counteraction to uh, the social media, the social social media counteraction to what's happening with the Russia story. Um, is the lady who the track star who was smoking marijuana and she got yeah. Uh, we'll go in uh, here. The other thing too. Um, so, how we, how I want to show this is, I try to put these in order. Right? You see a headline, you see a headline or a meme, uh, something. Like, oh god, the world's ending! Oh no! So, so social media influencers, um, fitness influencers, trainers, bodybuilders say. Uh, steroids are pretty rampant amongst these individuals, and I, I like the little animation there. That's, I love it. Um, <laughs> okay. uh, so claiming their gains come from workout workouts and diet plans. Do some of them look like that because of just good diet and exercise? Oh my goodness. Uh, good diet and exercise, yeah. Some of them are not. A lot of them probably aren't taking steroids, but there's going to be a good portion of them that are. Because they are making money. They have contracts with some companies and they need to stay fit year round. And they can't do it just on that supplement alone or just by diet and exercise. Um, so they might need a little bit of extra help. Uh, so uh, this article you can read um, about the social media influencers. We've probably all seen them. It's, it's, a, it's a fascinating world to, to view some of the some of the influencers. Um, I showed a video of Liver King in the last class or maybe it was two classes ago. Big dude looks like he's on steroids. So he kind of answered the question whether or not he is natural or not. He kind of trolled everybody. He didn't say he was natural. He didn't say he wasn't natural. <laughs> so pretty much meaning that he's not natural. Um, Are you talking about what he said like last week? Yeah. 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 He's such a dude. Yep. yep. Yeah, the syringe is full of maple syrup, which actually, I'm going to start doing, man. Injecting maple syrup into my steak. Yes. <laughs> yes. That sounds. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. That's what our ancestors would have done. <laughs> yep. Yeah, our 1980s ancestors. Oh boy. So, anyway, um, these people have a large following. We're talking about hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of, of, of followers, and <clears throat> they sometimes are getting paid thousands of dollars per post, either per. A lot of times, uh, the reels are probably going to give them a little bit more money, but they're making lots of money per post. And if they don't look right, then their numbers might start falling off. And they could lose some of the contracts. Now, here's the question. 
say a lot of these people start to come out. Or someone has a guilty conscience. Other more people have guilty conscience. Now I gotta I gotta tell my followers that now this isn't all natural. Yeah, I'm taking the supplement, but I don't even you know they could say no, well, I really think it works, but I'm also taking steroids. And what do you think would happen? Would that be a, a good thing for them or And this isn't just with the United States. I, I actually see a lot of influencers in uh, overseas too. Uh, a lot of them in, in European countries. And there could be some areas where some of the laws in terms of uh, some of the, the drug use is somewhat lax. I think that there would be a lot healthier take mentally on on these things, like. <clears throat> It'd be, it's kind of like a professional painter painting a picture and be like, you can do this too. Like, this was so easy. I suck at painting. And that's like when somebody's like, I'm natural. All you got to do is work hard. But like, you come out and like, do a dog. Like, I'm really good at painting. They're like, ah, okay. I'll just appreciate yeah. your work. And it's something I can, you know, take in. I think it'd be a lot. You, know, you just have like realistic expectations. Yeah. Realism. Well, what do you think would happen though? If they just, Yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm I'm on board. This is what I take. This this this. They tell you how how they cycle all that stuff. What the sponsorships? Well, if they all do that. The sponsorships will be there. Oh yeah, and that and that's the thing. It's either none of them do it, or the whole system falls. And then, so well, I think I think people think that they'll lose sponsorships in. Minutely, I think they do because like it's only one that does it, and they lose their sponsorships because they can make more money off something. But if it was a, a larger group where it became the popular idea to let everybody kind of just know what they're doing, I think the sponsorship would still be there because like you're not just taking steroids to look like that. Like you're still yeah. training for the hour, you have your card <laughs> you're doing, you're tracking what you're doing. You like there's a whole thing, you know, to it. So yeah. those things are so important. Yeah, and that's the thing. They're still working out. They're still doing those things that they need to do to actually look like that. They're not just, I mean, yeah, the, even if they didn't, weren't taking it, it'd still be somewhat bigger and maybe stronger, but they wouldn't nearly look, look like that. And it, what I mean by look like that is we're talking like that 6 to 12% body fat year round, which is somewhat impossible to do. I mean, people can do it. Don't get me wrong, uh, but it takes a lot of work to do. Uh, being that big too, you're out. So, um, you know, there's no time in which they can look soft, you know, unless they are training for bodybuilding or something, something like that. Then, you know, they can actually use that to their advantage. Um, you know, they're building things. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is somewhat. Um, this is a topic that somewhat coincides with what happened last. What was it? Was that September, October, when the lady came out about Facebook or, or Meta or whatever they're calling themselves now, uh, and Instagram, and they, their own research shows that you know people will get addicted to it, even though they might be depressed that they don't look like that. They come back to it because they are depressed, and it's the it's like any other addiction. They get their fix of it. So, just not with females and kind of that perfect female image and I see a lot of a lot of that too on so, so, on social media and it's just not social media print magazines still do it today too a lot of it's just online um because that was the big topic and that's why I went over Photoshop the last class because that was that was a big topic when I was in high school as well as college uh was magazines doing a bunch of Photoshop and uh, retouching and all that stuff so <clears throat> so the reason oh, um, the reason I have it listed this way is you find a meme or you find a find an article or find a headline on Twitter or Facebook or whatever it might be, someone links something, social media influencers. Oh my god. Okay. We have the the non-peer-reviewed, non maybe non-scientific. There might be a scientist in there that says something, but let's dive a little bit deeper. What are some of the influences? So I have linked PDFs to actual scientific peer-reviewed studies. 
Um, this one is from Scandinavia, I believe. Oh, from Health, Social Science, Psychology, uh, Direct University, right? the Netherlands. There you go. So uh, they looked at social media, body image, and resistance training, and uh, creating perfect me with dietary supplements, and block steroids, and SARMs. Let's see what the SARMs are. They are the selective antigen receptor modulators in male gym users. Male gym users in this case. So they did not uh, did not look at female influences from this, but there could be a little bit of female influence with it because um, it could be, might not be performance enhancing, but it is body image enhancing. So they might want to look good for the, for the ladies. It could be part of it. Uh, but they're trying to keep up with the Joneses is basically what they're, they're saying. Uh, <laughs> so what did they find? Uh, down here in the conclusions, and this is the great thing about scientific studies, is that they have this nice little synopsis called an abstract. And sometimes you can just read that and get most of the information that you need. Sometimes you want to go a little bit deeper. But use of dietary supplements in young men, uh, young male gym users is exorbitant. Exorbitant? Exorbitant? Oh my goodness. So the use of them uh, makes substantial uh, image center. Image Centric social media use is positively associated with the use of dietary supplements. There you go. So it was causing an increase in, or at least correlated with an increase in the usage. So whether that was, was because maybe an influencer actually told them that this is going to help you build more muscle or maybe lose more weight or um, do whatever, maybe recover better, or they want to look like that person that they are constantly seeing on a day-to-day -day basis on, on the screen, and they do whatever they can. They buy whatever products they, they can to make themselves look like that. Some of these, uh, reading through it, were simply creatine. Some of them were just weight loss supplements, and some of it was steroids. I think it was like 4% of them uh, was steroids. So. <laughs> so, again, a scientific... Uh, journal article with actual data. It's not opinionated from one political side or the other. Or, um, again, there's, there, there's bias in everything, uh, but we try to eliminate as much bias as possible. So you can look through that, social media influence. And then we get to the big one, which is a lot. <laughs> so, so again, the same thing. We have a Huffington Post article that kind of states what was going on. And then uh, we also have uh, what is trimetazine, is it trimet, whatever. Try, follow it up, New York Times. And then, okay, we got these two articles that this one's actually kind of more uh, scientifically, uh, I guess, astringent. There's an actual um, doctor there I think cardiologists, but they state the facts of like what this drug actually does. And this is the one that was banned um, in the Olympic Committee, uh, the, the I IOC. So, so we have two articles that were from newspapers, which again, provide some basic information. Okay, now, now what's, what's actually happening in the scientific process behind them? So improvement in exercise and disease patients, as well as high altitude. In healthy subjects. So I was able to find um, kind of two different scenarios there. One where it was disease patients were improving. That's what it's for. This product that she was using is a heart medication. And that's part of the possible issue that went on. So, all right, that was being post. So there's the young lady there. And when I say young lady, she is 15 years older than we. So if we're talking young. People, which is the reason why she is able to compete still. If anyone's been keeping up with the story, is that she is essentially a protected individual because she is a minor. So the Olympic Committee basically kicked her out. And then they had to renege on that because, well, just by law. So the rule is now if she is first, second, or third, 
there will be no medal ceremony until this gets sorted out. So, which can be unfair to the other two participants. Kind of, kind of sucks. They just kind of want to make sure that they're giving medals to the right individual. So this, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it basically states kind of what was what was happening here. Um, and she tested positive for, for uh, whatchamacallit. So, wait, so you could take a 15 and juice to the gills and they would test positive and be like, ah, they still got to compete. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's because they had, they, they didn't admit that it was, it was, she was taking it purposely. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure exactly the, the reason. But yeah, that almost seems like what they're, what they're saying is because she is underage. She, she's a minor. Jack them up on steroids and she'd be okay, which, and there, there's got to be something else going on. There's also a social issue that is happening now, and I believe that, oh, uh, the one, um, no, yes. the Jack. Sorry, there you go. So, solid answer. And there's been a couple other ones too uh, that have that pointed out they're trying to relate it to race issues. Whether or not that's the case or not, I, my opinion, I'm, I'm a white guy, so I don't think it's an actual race issue. I think it's just, it's a weird scenario in this case because it is a young person and there is also somewhat of an explanation. Um, I don't know much about. Uh, she carries uh, drug testing. I don't know what actually went on with that one. So, yeah. Well, she had like an unfortunate situation around it. She said she never smokes and she was dealing with like either the death of her mom or yeah. something like that. And she was like, so I needed an outlet, right? So that kind of like is a good story for the public too, which is why it picked up so much traction. Yeah, and, and because the opinion on marijuana is, I mean, it is completely shifted. 20 years ago, it, it, she would have been, nope. That's, that's a, that's a no-go. She should be banned from everything from now until the end of eternity. Now it's like, uh, who, who the hell cares? Right, so it's just, it's just, it, it's just weed. Yeah. Maybe there's still a stigma there with it. Plus, she was, I think, 20 or 21 as well. So it wasn't there, there it was a little bit of a different case. A little bit. And it wasn't like, well, I was in a room with somebody who was smoking weed or something. It was you know, so uh so that tells the story of kind of the the overall stuff that is happening, and then the next one down is okay. What is this drug that she was taking? Or she was accused of taking and was in her system. Oh, it wasn't her system. It tested for it. So PDF here. I took this from the New York Times. Don't tell anybody. <sighs> So uh, what is it? Uh, it basically helps the body with, well, blood flow for, for one thing, as well, maybe oxygenation a little bit. And it's really prescribed for people who have heart conditions. But for people who are using it as a performance enhancing substance, it could possibly help them go a little bit longer. A little bit more stamina. Their heart rate might actually be a little bit lower during that activity, which would mean like they don't feel like they're working as hard as they should be. So they might have a better sense of euphoria with that. And they might be able to perform a little bit higher intensity because they don't feel like they're almost at their max anyway. So uh, this goes into detail about what, uh, what it is. So Oh yeah, she's considered a protected person by the world anti-doping Why? So uh, she did say it was unintentional, and that's the that's the 
the other kind of this, I, I believe she was living with her. There, there's a whole bunch of this story. I'm trying to keep up with it because it's just like it's like every couple hours or something new. Um, but she was living with her grandfather, and her grandfather was taking this medication, and or she was traveling with her grandfather, and she may have gotten some pills mixed, mixed up. I was like, why would she be mixing up pills? Uh, for one, one thing, um, or it could have been contaminated. I, I don't know. Not exactly sure how that would happen, but weird things happen, right? Now, whether or not that's true or not, should it even matter? Still in her system, and still banned. Does it cause that much of a influence on performance? All right, we got these. But what it is, and we got maybe you, you, you put on your hazmat suit and then you dive deep into the comments of a YouTube video somewhere, right? It's usually what happens. You have to, or, or, the, or the Twitter feed, man. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> Start scrolling down. You're just like, no. So we have a couple peer-reviewed articles. So... Uh, improves exercise performance of patients with peripheral artery disease. So that one, uh, or that, that was in Italy. Italy. And then the other one, this one was for, with healthy individuals. So uh, high altitude fatigue. When you go to high altitude, you get fatigued really quickly because there's not as much oxygen per unit volume of air. So you get fatigued a lot quicker. This is somewhat, I wouldn't say like blood doping, uh, but it, it would help in somewhat of the same way. It just more, it helps provide more efficient way of the body getting more oxygen. Uh, and these were randomized, double blind, placebo controlled clinical trials for this. So um, there you go. Um, yeah, the, the cardiorespiratory uh, fitness impairment, that one's the, the big one once you go to high altitude. Uh, for short events like powerlifting, altitude generally doesn't affect too much. Um, throwing events, it possibly would. Uh, but anything lasting longer than a couple minutes, yeah, it's gonna, gonna affect it. So uh, I'm not sure how long the skating routine lasts. Is it four or five minutes? Yeah, so it could start to affect performance, especially if it was at high altitude. I'm not sure exactly um, how, how where they're at in Beijing when they're actually skating, but uh, could affect them there. So, <clears throat> so there you go. So actual scientific data again, just not some some doofus on Twitter. Uh, my granddaddy used to do a nerd, nerd, nerd. And then where are we at? And then the next one down, like seriously, I, I put this up here, put these in here. And I'm like, okay, cool. I got something for class. And then all of a sudden, you get another one. <laughs> it's like your time just come at me. So there you go. She had three, three of them in, in her system. <sighs> so there you go. She has a heart condition. And that's the other thing, too. I've also heard that they made the excuse that she was taking them for heart conditions, but then she was with her grandfather. She didn't have a heart condition, but it, the pills got mixed up. But like, why is she mixing up pills? What other pills is she taking that she'd be mixing up with her? So there's a, there's a really fishy story there, but I don't know. And maybe they just didn't know. I don't know. So what were the couple things that they were, uh, what, that they also found um, and this is, again, documents that were viewed by the, the New York Times. They found these uh, hypoxin and L-carnitine. Has anybody ever heard of hypoxin? Uh, has anyone ever taken it? I, I found it, but I could not find any studies on its effects on maybe healthy individuals' performance. It can help possibly with, um, again, it's a, more of a heart medication. I think it can help with respiration in the cellular level, but I'm not, I don't know how well it works in healthy individuals. I, I, I also don't, I couldn't find a whole lot on it in healthy individuals. So I'll keep looking for that. These two are not banned. These are not on the banned substance list. L-carnitine is 
It sometimes uh, actually uses a, a fat loss on it. Um, and that's huge in like powerlifting communities. Yeah. Push like a gram of the pro. Yeah. Like, and in fact, I, way back, it, I, I, had to, I had to think with somewhere in the deep in my hard drive in <laughs> my brain, uh, there's some l quarantine information in there because I actually did a short paper on it in, in undergrad. Uh, but I almost forgot what it was about. So, um, but we have some studies here. There, there's lots of studies on carnitine. Um, it is used, and you can find it pretty much anywhere online as L carnitine or just carnitine uh, in different forms, too. Uh, so, this is general exercise nutrition biochem. So, effects of nine weeks L carnitine supplementation and exercise performance, anaerobic power, exercise induced oxidative stress. This oxidative stress is big because that's what happens after the exercise. You put your muscles through a lot of stress and there's some oxidation that happens uh, to try to repair, get rid of all the tissues that are broken down, repair it. And the quicker that happens, the better, better off you're gonna be. That's why the steroids are beneficial. So um, yeah, this is beneficial, although there's a lot of textbooks that say that there's no scientific evidence to show any benefit, although there, there is at least a little bit to show some, um, some, some benefit. Um, whether it's super significant. And then there was another one, and this one is for recovery, which is, again goes back to that oxidative stress to help them recover quicker. So after exercise. Um, so it could have some benefits uh, there in the, the abstract here. Uh, should the l carnitine take can lead to increased muscle mass accompanied by decrease in body weight, reduce physical and mental fatigue. So she had all three of these in her system. All three of them. All of them were uh, at least proposed effects or effects that are empirical, that are actually seen in studies to where maybe reduce fatigue, increase performance or aerobic activity, which is what the skating is. Uh, possibly help with breathing a little bit, uh, negate some of the hypoxia that can occur uh, through just not exercise, but possibly altitude. Again, I'm not sure what, what altitude they're at. I can't imagine it's so high that the, they, would, they would affect them much, but Anyway, she had all three of them, just not one. If it was just one, maybe say, well, maybe it doesn't help a lot, but it just seems like if there's three of them, maybe there was something fishy going on because they were trying to combine the three and have, instead of just taking pure blood doping, he just got, yeah. But again, whether or not, I'm not accusing her of intentionally doing it, so there's um, and I'm not saying that she did it, that anybody did anything nefarious. It could, it could have just been an accident or something screwed up uh, in terms of she, she thought she was taking one thing, but it was something else. Could have been she thought she was taking an Advil or aspirin or something. But you don't trust Russians, Vern. <laughs> I know. I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt because I still, because. Hmm. Are these, they're still not even the Russians, right? They're the. Uh, yeah, they're the world... Russian Olympic Committee. <laughs> Rock. So that is that is that. And again, going back to the first lecture I gave, we're gonna have, especially in this topic, we're gonna have posts like this where you get some good information, then you're gonna have memes and you're gonna have Facebook posts and opinion pieces and blogs. This is where the, the meat of it is. What does the data actually say on, on this stuff? Um, you could do the same thing with any other topic. And again, COVID would be one of them. Um, just trying to find the, the article. Sometimes they're tough to read, especially some of the stuff I read on COVID. I'm like, man, this is, <laughs> it went way over my head. Uh, but I try anyway. They need to make an AI system where you can just copy and paste stuff like that. It can be called Demofier. I be wish, yes. There's actually one, and this is speaking of scientific papers. There was actually a 
there, there was a program. Somebody actually got a physics paper. I, I think it was a physics paper. Peer reviewed, published. They put it into this program, and this was some years ago. So, so there is some AI working to make words somewhat coherent, but they were able to put words together to make it sound coherent, but it actually was just gibberish. But all three of the people that reviewed it said, yeah, looks good. <laughs> and it got published. So they had to redact it then because the person was done, basically making an experiment out of peer review process. And, I, and I've seen it before. It's, it's not, some people get behind and go, oh, I forgot I was peer reviewing that. Then you only have a day to review it. And yeah, so it happens. Sometimes it slips through, but most of the time it gets caught. Um, so the technology is probably there. No. However, it should be up to the researchers to, and this is this is one one aspect of of my field uh, as well as a lot of medical fields is you're supposed to write where we're taught this, supposed to write the papers in somewhat of a lay manner. There has to be some technical information in there and some terminology, but it, it should not be something where somebody can't just pick up and read it and say, i got a general idea. There's a few terms there I don't know, but i got a general idea. We've somewhat gotten, gotten away from that. Um, some people are still pretty good at, at writing in lay, lay terms. Actually, the I would say the godfather of strength conditioning, uh, William Kramer, uh, actually writes like that, like really good kind of down to earth writing and everything too. So uh, he's at Ohio State. Well, where was it? Any questions on any of this? Anyone keeping up with this Olympics or anything? Everyone watching the Olympics? <laughs> the Olympics are as bad as baseball. Oh, man, I love seeing the Olympics. I, there, there's a whole other issue, too, that would be more kind of more sports manager, uh, sports management side, and maybe Terry's area, he does the Olympics, but uh, going over how, like, I see the beautiful facility for the speed skating and the, and the bobsledding. It's like, okay, what's going to happen to that after the Olympics are over? Like, what Sweat are they going to, huh? Sweat shop. Yeah, it's a, either that or it's just going to it's going to crumble. In fifty years, you get see pictures of it, you know, moss and vines growing everywhere. And, um, yeah, so there, there's a lot of that where where countries spend a lot of money on facilities to build just for the Olympics, and then they're used once for the Olympics, and that's it. They're kind of done. And that's yeah. Um, but I I like seeing it because it's some of it's crazy. The the skiers. They're down the hill like 70 mile an hour. Holy crap. I don't know if you've seen the one. It, this was last week, actually. Um, she had crashed. She, it, it, was, a, it, was, a, it was the slalom. And she went from like the, the track, basically, to kind of the rough snow. And her foot got caught. And her ski flew off. And you didn't really notice anything until she hit. And then you see her leg go. Yes, so it just it snapped her. I think both tibia and fibula in, in half. So not good. Um, yeah, you're going down a hill at seventy some mile an hour. Yeah. I know there was. I don't think that there was anything you say, but there was on the skiing event. I saw it on social media where someone took it right between the legs on one of the flagpoles. Oh. And just just. Couldn't even go anymore. Oh, <laughs> yes, nope. Scream. Oh. So that's, that's what do you think about uh, injury recovery and using using? There have been some athletes. Um, in fact, some of the major league players, yeah, uh, football players too, uh, had taken steroids because they were trying to recover from an actual injury that they already had. It wasn't like they were taking them before. And then we want to stay home. Like, let's say that lady yeah. just snatched. She's like, I want to get back, you know, in half the time. <laughs> and that, and I don't know if there's any gray area there where a doctor could prescribe it for actual medical purposes. 
uh, for an actual injury, not just, oh, my muscles are a little bit sore. It's, I have a broken leg, or I have a torn muscle, or I have, you know, a, a, a torn ligament. Something that could actually be beneficial, and which I, I well, is beneficial. We, we know that the service could possibly be, as long as it's regulated and it's taking the right amounts, possibly. Yeah. Uh, I'm all right with it. I don't know if the IOC would be. That's the problem, is we have the governing bodies that are going to be making these decisions, and then we have some weird things with maybe underage people. Or, that just such a weird, strange story. Like that's why I'm fascinated by it. No. And what I want to see is when she is competing, are the judges going to be fair? That's what I want to see. Like if if she's just getting super low numbers, then there's also some other fishy stuff going on. And then then what do you do? Now she had an, uh, she was unfairly criticized, possibly, and penalized because of something that happened, possibly happened, that hasn't been resolved yet. So I don't know. We'll, we'll wait to see, but it's going to be interesting. See how they proceed. And if she, but if on the opposite side, if she wins gold, then what happens? Can't wait, man. I'm going to be on Twitter like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. No. Yeah, put the hazmat suit on. Just and just sit back and wait. Right. <sighs> I think it'll be, be, it'll be enough for tonight. So, all right, for, for next week, uh, I think well, possibly I'll, I'll let you know here by the end of the week. Um, I want to show one of the videos I want to uh, for for the steroids thing, probably the uh, Sosa McGuire one. More likely what I'm going to do is I'll probably be in my office and probably just stream it that way on Zoom. Because I don't know how you guys have to pay for it. Uh, my uh, internet in my house is terrible, so I'll probably have to be here on campus. So I could come to um, to this classroom, but take as long as I'm, I'm in my office, I, I think we're okay. So, uh, so it'll be, I guess, Zoomed that way. I don't think I can actually record it because then YouTube will probably flag me if I try to upload it. So, um, anyway, thank you guys for coming and have a great week weekend. So.